Yeah, I find this is a very good way of feeding bees inside a hive because it keeps the food away from wasps. And it doesn't attract attention oh. from robbers. <laughs> Unless, of course, you spill yeah. half of it through the floor. In which case, <laughs> you have every ant in the kingdom. <laughs> Quite. Yeah. So I know this is some kind of heresy, but very tempting to suggest that those bars could would be a good candidate for um, uh, for three D printing, yeah, or, or, or moulding, you know, out of yeah, uh, yeah. recycled plastic. They, they would be a lot, a lot simpler and. Um, yeah. I, I'll go and wash my mouth out now. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Technology is racing ahead, isn't it? Again, there's a few bees on the top here, but yeah. not, not so many as would be worrying. And I'm wondering whether they're actually... Hmm, they might be discussing the use of propolis with their co-workers. <laughs> you see, this um, a month or two ago, uh, wet weather admitted, but it was getting a lot of moisture and condensing on the inside. Uh -huh, yeah. um, I've got an interlayer there of uh, reflectix foil and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I think um, that that reflectix stuff. The, the is, that, is that what it is? It's got the bubble layer between. That's right, yeah. 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 Maybe you could even wrap a layer of that over here. Um, if you felt like extra winter, winter insulation was a good idea. The, the, again, this one has got a couple of these uh, foundation layers. Yeah. And, but these have gone further down than it. This is the hive that is extended down and filled the, oh, okay. the, 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 the shape the best. Yeah. Um, and I would, you know, I'm going to lift this one out. And uh, see just what see what happens. Full of open stores and sealed honey at the top. Yeah, they're doing a great job there. Of course, people still say you know top bar houses still won't work in this country, and you know. I think it pretty much gives you more area, but not necessarily more vertical depth, maybe a little more. I'm just thinking, I'm saying that because the floor itself is not that deep. Um, so what, what they've done using this design is lift up the, the profile of the comb, which increases the attached area, which can only be a good thing for stability. Um, it definitely does increase the area of the comb, which again, can only be good. Um, on my version of it, all I did lit was literally add this profile yeah, yeah. to an otherwise normal horizontal top bar hive. So I also had the depth yeah. here, which which you don't have so much because you've got the mesh floor in, in the. Uh, no, and I think some down. of the some of the uh, other top bar hives have got a steeper angle on the inside, uh -huh. um, so that you, it, it, it goes down. It's deeper from from here on down. It's sure, it's, it sure. Because this has been the, the profile of this, the cross section of this, should I say, is is pretty much a perfect hexagon. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. Pretty well. I'm blocking the entrance here. I'm just going to get out of the way slightly because I've got a traffic queue move, for me. I'll move this one as well and have a peep in here. Sure. It, yeah. <laughs> This is a heavier, you can feel the weight of the... Oh yes, I can see there's um, a good deal of capped honey there. Yeah, it's about half capped honey. There's no, no brood in there? Can there is some it? brood, yeah, it's just the it, remnants, of, there's it, an edge of brood just below the, um, at the bottom, is it bottom there? line of the honey, yeah. And there's fresh nectar everywhere else, so oh, I, I guess they're gonna. The, the, the honey storers are taking over this comb okay. from from the brood rearing, which is what you tend to find at this time of year because they're 
they're now focused on storing up food for winter, not so much on rearing they're brood. Also, they're going, that, so that must be the same there then, I yeah. guess. Like, if you just use the back of your hand okay. gently like this, it moves them away and you can see what's going on underneath. Uh, yeah. And you can see they're storing nectar here, I, yeah. pretty much all over this area. The, the odd little bit of brood cell remaining okay. from the last cycle. But otherwise, they're, yeah, their intention there is to fill that with So the queen's not nectar. laying in at full strength there at the moment? Well, she's, she's, she's not laying back, in that comb, for backing sure. Backing off a bit. Yeah, she will be slowing down a bit now. It's, it's heading for September and they, she's got, I don't know how many bars, I haven't counted, but a good 15 or 16 bars of comb in there. Yeah, I, I can see I'm going to have to build one one of these properly, one of these days. I like the, I like the stability of it, and I think for people in, especially in warm climates like you know southern USA, Texas, Georgia, Louisiana, places like that, Florida, um, where they do get daytime temperatures well over 100 degrees quite routinely in the summer. Um, having that extra yeah. length of comb attachment can only be a good thing, although they still need to stop opening their hives in the middle of the day, for sure. But um, I think that having that... I don't know what... The, I haven't worked out the maths, but the difference between a straight line across here, right across the hive, which is what you'd get in a, in a standard top bar hive, yeah. the, um, and the attached... Uh, and the uh, Sorry, the length, the, uh, the linear length, around mm. this mm. half of a hexagon. Um, there's quite a big difference there. It must be at least a third or even up to 50% longer. Um, yeah, right, which I, gives you that much more I think, firm yeah. attachment. And the fact that they're not attaching to the sides is interesting No, they're too. not at all. No. Well, uh, I say that. Um, you can actually see through the, um, the, the, the window, the door, the, the little window. Yes, because that's a good test because I found that... Um, they're, they're not... Yeah, that, that is really interesting because this, this is... that is literally the first observation window I've looked through where bees have not attached comb to the side. Every other observation window I've ever seen, yeah. you can see the comb, where the comb is yeah. attached all the way down, but not here, which is very interesting indeed. And if they do, or when they do, start to make um, queen cells preparing for swarming, you, you would almost see certainly, them. well, yes, if you were, if you were lucky and had them on this side of the comb, you'd, yeah. you'd see them through the window. I've got a door, an equivalent door on the other side, so... Oh, there you go, you, see, you can see both when sides. That, um, when I opened that, you used to be able to see light through and you'd get a profile. Okay, uh, yeah. Being now as they've virtually filled up the gap, you can't see through yeah. <laughs> because there's too many there. Heck of a yeah, well, it's because I've been standing in their way for the last <laughs> few minutes. They've been queuing up behind me. Loads of pollen going in, which is great to see at this time of year. Mm. There's not a spare cubic centimeter of space between. What's the width of these bars? 38. They are 38, okay. Yeah. Finished, you should ideally make them one or two wider ones to, to allow them to make fatter curves. It, yeah, absolutely. It doesn't hurt to have, uh, you know, I think 42 is quite, 42 or even 44 is quite an acceptable width for honey storage because they love to make fat comb for honey. It's just more efficient for them to extend existing tubes in the comb than it is to build for a whole fresh comb. Okay. Well. Oh, you've got a window on the end as well, I like that. Th yeah, that. <laughs> Let's come and have a look at that from this side. There it's you go. So you've got a window. Got a bit fuzzy. You can see straight <laughs> into the high end to the end. At this end, I've got a... Oh, 
Yes. Right. Well, there, there they are. That's interesting. They, they've actually preferentially started their own comb there, rather yes. than drawing out the <laughs> yeah. uh, foundation. Sorry, buddies. See, they've gone right down to the, virtually to the floor on, on the inside ones, within spitting distance of the mesh, even. Yes. Again, you know, good strong colony, healthy looking bees, doing all the right things. Again, they're, they're, they're probably best left un, 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 undisturbed and not, not right, troubled. Again, too yeah, much. I don't see any reason to disturb them. Well, I mean, we had a, look, a good look at that yeah. end. We can, we've seen sealed brood, yeah. we've seen honey, you know, um, we haven't seen the queen, but so what? We know there's a yeah. queen in there because she's. Um, she's obviously been laying very recently. I think um, they will thank us for being left alone to their own devices. I've noticed that sometimes if you get a thundery shower up here, um, the moment the, the rain starts to drip, if there's a shower on its way, They'll all suddenly come in mm -hmm. in, a, in a great cloud yeah. all at once. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know if that, I suppose that's normal. Well, we do the same sort of thing, really, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, this is the sort of level of activity you'd be quite happy to be seeing in May. Is it? Know, during the build-up period. Mm. So to see it in mid-August is is very satisfying I think there's enough room though for them to expand oh, this, yeah. this year I don't need to if they if they wanted to, to to store more if they want to build more cone they've got room actually both ends yeah. to do so so there's nothing to worry about there and that's what you want to know I mean, when you look when you're looking through a hive you want to know you know the bees look basically healthy that they've yeah, got yeah. stores which they certainly have here um, they, 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 there's open and sealed brood okay we didn't see open brood but we can we can um, imply it because yeah, of the fact yeah. that there's pollen going in because we've seen um, you know emerging brood or close to emerging um, you want to know that um, there's no obvious signs of infe infe infestation or infection yeah, uh, yeah. okay we haven't you, you know you're not doing for our accounts but again in a way who cares they're obviously coping they're yeah, obviously yeah. more than coping they're thriving so you know that's what that's my kind of judgment if they were looking a bit feeble you know if they were kind of milling around on the on the combs not doing anything particular not um you know, not bringing in pollen, right. looking a bit listless or getting a bit bad tempered, then that would be cause for concern. And then you'd want to go right through and, you know, really yeah, take a close that. look. But when they're like this, you know, why disturb them really? So it's yeah. nice to see such enthusiastic cone building in mid August, actually. Mm. Yeah because by this time of year they're usually pretty much slowed down on their comb building and they're busy filling it with, with uh, stores for winter. There's a blooming wasp, get away. The odd wasp isn't anything to worry about too much, it's when they gang up and it might be worth having a, a block of wood that you can half or even more close your entrance if wasps yeah. do turn out to be a real problem because um, an entrance like that is quite hard for bees to defend against wasps. Mm. I mean, literally I have, well on my polynukes they have a rotary entrance, you know, one of those things with the I know. queen excluder the setting and a mesh setting and so on. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, most of my polynukes, although they're fairly full of bees, I've only got half an entrance at the moment because of wasps. Mm. 
it just makes it that much easier for them to there's defend. There's one going in. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, two going in there. Yeah. They will. They'll sneak in when the guards aren't looking. Yeah. Sneaky little things. But that hive's strong enough to defend itself against wasps. It's just that, um, you know, it just makes it a little bit more work for them to do that Actually, sort of incidentally, I've got a, a window here at the side that you can look in and see. Oh, right, okay. Without too much disturbing. I'll just dismount the camera and look through the window. It's hard to see. Um, it's quite dark, but you can see that there are bees all the way along there. Definitely. Nice strong colony. Mm. Yeah, and broods up this end. This one's getting angry at me. Maybe time to pop your hood on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't get the thing on fast enough. <laughs> yes, this is this is where you learn that the time to put your hat on is before you get near the high. <laughs> it says he not wearing one. Oh dear. But it's only the odd one, isn't it? I mean, most of them are quite calm and uh, quite happy for us to be here. Well, I say happy, I mean, they're, they're tolerating us. Yeah, these are quite... Um, quite Italian-looking, this, this bunch. And quite quite keen on making drone brood as well. Lots of drone cells here, but they sometimes do that just for storage purposes too. They won't necessarily be laid up as drone brood. It could end up just being as a being honey storage because they're not likely to be making you know many drones at this time of year because this is the time they usually get kicked out. So they'll be. I, I mean, I, I can't see there's a likelihood of them um, making a second queen or what they call superseding. Superseding. The, do you think? It does happen this time of year. It can happen. But if they've got a queen that they're happy with, they won't, uh, they won't bother. Interesting to see them making use of these tunnels in the top. Let's see. And they're not closing up the tunnels or they're not um, trying to build comb in the tunnels or anything no. like that so no. that seems a fairly clear yeah. indication that they're, 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 they like them being there and they're making use yeah. of them. Well I think the fact that the, 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 the each one s seals as it were, the, the air's not, or the warm air is not escaping yes, out of the core of it. Should I take this one off or um, move it along? I wouldn't bother too much unless unless you really want to go through that. No, I'm just thinking colony, you might right. want to explore a bit. <laughs> I don't want to disturb them. If to be honest, necessary. my attitude is, you know, if they're looking this good, it's a good strong colony. Um, there's no obvious problems. There's no dead bees on the floor. No. They're not starving. They're working hard. Yeah. You know, they're doing yeah. all the right things. You know, I, I just I don't bother going through them unless no. there's a good reason to. No, it no just way. seems like too much disturbance to them. Yeah. And why? You know, what are you looking for? I mean, 
you know, it's, it's quite clear they're not they're not suffering from any obvious disease. You know, there, there's probably some varroa in there, but you know, yeah. there's there's varroa in everybody's hives. So, what are you going to do about it? We're not going to use chemicals. So, you know, there's nothing to be gained really. All that's going to happen is you end up exposing um, honey to the air, which is going to attract robbers or attract yeah. wasps, yeah. Yeah. and just make life more difficult for them. So, you know, my attitude is just leave them be if there's unless there's a really good reason not to. Coming in. I don't know what that is. Which is several shades of, of yellow, all on the pale side, but. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, great to see that amount of truck. Well, thank you, Graham. That's uh, been quite an education. Well, thank you for coming and uh, giving me this reassurance. <laughs> I wanted to know. <clears throat> I don't know whether I'm going to be brave enough to take any honey off this year, but... Uh, uh, my, my feeling would be leave them alone over winter, just let, let them yeah. overwinter on what they've got right. and then take the surplus in the spring right. because I'm sure they're going to have more than they need. Oh, that's great, I'm really happy to see those. <laughs>